Uh, first, why does Saudi Arabia import so much barley? Uh, and why is perhaps maybe there's such little barley uh, available on the market? In the well, hmm. That a simple question. Wow. <laughs> okay. The, the barley is traded in the world is about 14 to 15 million tons. This is how much barley, not being produced, what I meant by produced, produced to be sold. That is what, what's in the market. That's what tradable barley is in the world. Now, Saudi Arabia, this is when strategies goes against your interest. Saudi Arabia, we pay almost 60% subsidies or sometimes reach to 75% subsidy on barley. So what happened? The barley goes to everybody. Everybody what they do, they imported barley and they take the subsidy 75%. And then they imported live sheep. They imported live sheep very young and they converted Saudi Arabia into uh, a, 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 feeding, a feeding country and we are feeding the animals of basically for uh, Saudi Arabia. Some of it goes for smuggler. It's smuggler to, other, uh, to our neighbor country. Uh, I am a big promoter that is of the barley we must only give, not give it to the trader but give it to the local producer and the ministers uh, of agriculture, he's a good friend of mine, and we had a debate over live, and he laughed at me. He said, "Are you expected there is a tag on each sheep? This is a Saudi sheep. This is imported." I said, "No, we know very well. In Jeddah, which is the port, and the Mam is the port, there there is nobody grow. I mean, raise uh, sheep there. All the sheep are north of Saudi Arabia and south of Saudi Arabia. So in the east and the west are nothing but a trader." Traders should not get one single dollar of subsidies. Subsidies must go only for the local producer and try to take it into a big city, uh, out of the big cities. It's a huge problem for Saudi Arabia. If you are 50% or 40% or 30% depends what year and what date and what number you're getting, we are a big problems with the barley. I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Desalination is very expensive. Can you describe what effort goes towards it? Desalinations, we have signed a contract with uh, IBM. I'm not sure whether uh, Princeton was, is involved. Uh, that is, they built a desalination plant in Al Khafji, purely on solar. When we produce the water, Riyadh, the capital, it gets about 1 million liters of water per day. What are you going to do with that, with that water when it's finished? My argument is that we take this water, we process it, and then we can use it for fruit. Uh, it has to be highly treated. But usually fruit, you could get away with most of it. You, people will not take your vegetables if it's grown on... Uh, but you could use that water, that in Riyadh alone, 1 million uh, cubic meters per day is uh, you can use that uh, for processing and you could use it for agriculture and that will help to reduce the poverty of the urban of the big cities of Saudi Arabia. Did I answer your question? Question about uh, some of the effects of this. Uh, so are you seeing in Saudi Arabia increases of malnutrition rates and also uh, the prices of foods? If we remember in the, why did Saudi Arabia go into agriculture? There was a big slogan in the 70s, late 70s, barrel of oil for a bushel of wheat. Uh, I was part of the, of, of the team was involved with that. In 19, in the early Reagan administration, don't quote me on the name, but it's one of those, it's either the Secretary of Trade or Secretary of uh, Transportation. He came to Saudi Arabia and he said a barrel of oil for uh, a, a, a bushel of wheat. And Saudi Arabia had made a strategic decision to go into agriculture. Agriculture is, and food production 
The argument I'm making here, it's, it's a four, four direction. The US, Australia, the developed world, that you go with them with alliance through strategic alliance to prevent it from blocking your uh, food. Number two is Africa is you go with them because of corporate responsibility, because of your social responsibility to others. Arab countries, Muslim countries, you should give them priority for investments. And the third one is taking the financial benefits of it. Why you take all that? Because you have to broaden your, to, to reduce your risk in case you got blocks or food is not available anymore. Uh, for example, when we have the food production uh, riot in 2008, 2007, there is no food available. Just simply wheat are not available in the market. And it's, it's a fact of life. The food agriculture industry now, they operate at 100% capacities. They don't have facility. There is no margin for mistakes. So if there is a crisis erupted anywhere, and believe me, it will erupt, where would Saudi Arabia go? We imported most of our food. So we're trying to lower the risk of having food available to us. Did that answer your question? So it's more about lowering the risk as opposed to for future prices versus treating the prices as one another. What I'm promoting is, a, is, 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 is that it's a multifunction one. That is, by reducing the poverty and em enhance employments and enhance economic growth in Saudi Arabia locally, you will get a byproduct of a food securities. You will have a food production there. Not 100%, but you might be lucky to get 25%. And that gives you a cushion, but at the same time, you are talk I'm talking here for securities. Maybe your money cannot have that food.